Hey, welcome to edX world and another video in the ASA level accounting series. So this video is going to be on the admission of a new partner into the existing partnership firm. In IGCSE, the basics of partnership were already studied, the preparation of profit and loss appropriation account, the preparation of capital and current accounts. If you need to brush up through the concepts of IGCSE, the link will be provided in the description. Please do so before continuing with this video. So in this video, we begin with understanding the admission of a partner. What is admission of a partner? Why would a partner be admitted to an existing firm? Then we need to understand the various adjustment entries that have to be done at the time of admission of a partner. So in this video, we will do the capital entry by new partner and we will also understand the revaluation of assets and liabilities. Then in the next video, we will understand the goodwill adjustment that has to be done at the time of admission of a new partner and one solved example that will have all the adjustments so that you get complete understanding of what, what all entries have to be done at the time of admission of a new partner. So what do you mean by admission of a partner? Admission of a partner is a situation where there's an existing firm which has partners. A person from outside comes and becomes a partner in the existing firm. That situation is known as admission of a partner. Now why would an existing firm or existing partners have someone as a new partner in the firm? There could be multiple reasons. Let's say the firm is in need of capital. So having another partner who will be bringing in money, who will be bringing in capital can be the reason for admission of a new partner. The other person who is coming in as a partner might have the industry experience and that can give a boost to the profits. That could be reason. Existing partners might be looking for someone to share the responsibilities of the business, someone who is trustworthy. That could be the new partner. So there will be multiple reasons for admission of a new partner. Now at the time of admission of a new partner, there have to be certain adjustment entries from accounting point of view that have to be kept in mind. First, there will be a change in the profit sharing ratio. Existing partners would be sharing the profits in a certain ratio, but when the new partner comes in, the new profit sharing ratio takes into effect and the existing profit sharing ratio will have no meaning, will, will not be used anymore after the partner is admitted. Then fresh capital would be introduced by the new partner, entry would have to be made for that. The revaluation of assets and liabilities have to be done. The existing assets and liabilities of the firm will have to be revalued to their current market values and the, the profit or loss on the revaluation will have to be adjusted in the old partner's capital account. How is this done? We'll see that in a bit. And finally, goodwill adjustment entry has to be made at the time of admission of a new partner. The goodwill adjustment entry will be seen in the next video. The partner could invest fresh capital in the firm at the time of admission. That capital could be in form of either cash, could be form of money in bank, could be form of in any other asset. So the accounting entry is obvious here. Whatever asset comes into the business, that will be debited, cash, bank or any other asset and the partner's capital will have to be credited. So in the partner's capital account, the entry would be there on the credit side of the partner's capital in the new partner's column which is the C partner. So in our examples, in our presentations, we will have A and B as the old partners and C who is coming in as a new partner. So if you see here, the entry is made on the credit side in the C column showing that the new partner is bringing in some or the other asset as capital. The next adjustment entry that is important is revaluation of assets and liabilities. See, understand why is revaluation needed. Now the old partners have been working in the firm and during their tenure in the firm, the value of assets and liabilities have increased or decreased. Consider a situation where the value of an asset has increased, for example, premises. If the new partner comes in and in future when that asset is sold, the entire gain on the disposal of the asset so the difference between the sale value at that time and the purchase cost at the time when only the old partners have purchased the asset, the entire gain will be have to be transferred to all the partners in the new profit sharing ratio. But this would be unfair to the existing partners because before the admission of the new partner, whatever increase in the value of asset has happened, that gain should be credited only to the existing partners and not to all the partners. So at the time of admission of a new partner, it is only fair for the existing partners to increase the value of such assets so that the gain until the point of admission is at least credited to the old partners and not transferred or not credited to all the partners in future. In the same way, consider another situation where the value of asset has decreased from its purchase price. 
in future when that asset would be disposed the loss on disposal will be shared by all the partners at that point of time in the new profit sharing ratio obviously this will not be fair for the new partner because he is not a partner since the purchase of the asset so at the point of admission if the value of asset is dropped the fall in the value of that asset it's a loss and that loss only has to be shared by the existing partners then only it would be fair for the new partner the new partner will not contribute in any losses until before the admission of the partner so let us have a look at the journal entries that have to be done at the time of revaluation of assets and liabilities so the journal entries can be divided into two parts first is the gain on revaluation so assets and liabilities change in a manner that there is gain on revaluation there's a profit on revaluation there could be two situations where can where there can be a gain on revaluation first is an increase in the value of assets and second decrease in the value of liabilities so when assets increase in value or liabilities decrease in value that that could lead to a gain on revaluation or a profit on revaluation so any increase in the value of assets can be recorded as a debit in that asset asset is a debit account so any increase in the value will have to be debited to the asset account so we have asset account debited and the revaluation account which is a temporary account opened for the purpose of revaluation that account would be credited and decrease in the value of liabilities can be recorded by debiting the liabilities liabilities are usually credit if there's a decrease in the liabilities debit the liabilities and again credit the revaluation account so these entries would record the gain on revaluation of assets and liabilities but there could be losses on revaluation of assets and liabilities in two situations that is possible first decrease in the value of assets or increase in the value of liabilities if there is a decrease in the value of assets that could be recorded as a credit to the asset account and debit in the revaluation account similarly any increase in the value of liabilities can be recorded as a credit in the liability account and debit to the revaluation account so these four entries will have to be passed the amount in these entries would be the change in the value so the market value minus the book value the change in the value will be the will be the amount that will be used to complete these entries once all these entries are done we can then calculate the final profit or loss on revaluation and transfer that to the partners capital so before that let's prepare the revaluation account this is usually what is asked in the exam so using these journal entries we can prepare our revaluation account also so remember in the revaluation account the credit side is always the gain side the debit side is always the loss side so if there is an increase in the value of an asset or a decrease in the value of liability always recorded on the gain side or the credit side and if there is a decrease in the value of asset and an increase in the value of liability always recorded on the sorry loss side or the debit side so let's start recording our entries increase in asset on the credit and decrease in asset on the debit increase in liability on the debit but decrease in liability on the credit finally we will have to see whether credit is greater than debit in that case it would be a net gain on revaluation so that will be transferred to the partners capital by recording the gain entry on the debit side the difference if the debit side of the revaluation is greater than the credit side it shows that there's a net loss on revaluation that will be recorded as a credit entry will be transferred to the partners capital i hope the revaluation account is clear once the profit and loss is transferred to the partners capital we could also show these amounts in the partners capital account if it's a profit shown on the credit side of partners capital if it's a loss shown on the debit side of partners capital i hope you understood the concept of revaluation of assets and liabilities why is it done and how is it done in the next video we'll have the goodwill adjustment entry and then we'll also see a small solved example that will give you a clear picture of all the entries to be done at the time of admission of a new partner if you enjoyed the video please like the video please share the video with your friends do not forget to subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon I'll see you soon with a new video.